just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome back to Coffee Time on this Halloween. Got a little bit of the sniffles, got caught out in a, a horrendous rainstorm. And um, walked around pretty soaked for a while. And I guess I got, got the sniffles a little bit, so bear with me here. So I'm asked a lot to tell uh, stories about my life, and I really try to avoid personal things unless I think about it a lot and decide I'll just go ahead and give it a try. And recently I've been asked about my military service, I've been asked about my profession, and I really hate to go there. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just not comfortable with it. It's not that I have any problem telling the story, I'm just not comfortable doing anything personal. But uh, something happened the other day, so I decided that, well, I'll talk about this. You know, back in the day, we didn't have access to a lot of music, and if you went out and you bought yourself a record album, it was quite an event, and you would play that thing over and over and over and over and over again, because you just didn't have a lot of disposable income to go out and waste on a lot of albums, and there wasn't any other way to get the music, really. So, I bought this album, Jesus Christ Superstar, a rock opera, and I played it over and over and over and over again. I played that thing so much that I knew every single word, every single note, every single instrument. Well, I joined the Marine Corps, and I went into the Marine Corps back when boot camp was uh, something pretty horrendous, I guess. I, personally, I got through okay, and I saw a purpose for the way that they were, but I had a particularly rough situation, not me personally, but the platoon I was in. You know, you're assigned three drill instructors, two assistants and one senior drill instructor, and you're supposed to go from beginning to end with that, which is about three and a half months. We went through 11 drill instructors uh, for uh, maltreatment. What happened was we had four suicides, we had two people dead, and uh, some teeth knocked out. There was a lot going on to the point where even in those days when, you know, it, it was expected to have a certain amount of uh, toughness going on, it was particularly, uh, you know, rough. And, you know, the reasoning behind it was as Vietnam was going on at the time, and they didn't want to train somebody knowing that they would end up back in a war and they didn't want to have anybody that slipped through the cracks that wasn't really going to stand up to what was going on. So for their own protection, for their own sake, uh, for friends that they had lost, they were especially tough trying to weed out who they felt shouldn't be in the, the service. So the attrition rate in those days was almost 50%. It's changed dramatically. It's not like that anymore. But if you remember the movie Full Metal Jacket, they covered a good portion of it on Marine Corps boot camp and covered some of the things. It was far worse than what that movie portrayed, actually. That came kind of after the fact. And again, I'm not complaining at all. I'm just trying to lay out the picture of this is what it was like then. And like I said, I got through fine. One of the reasons I got through was I was able to detach myself mentally. And one of the ways I was able to do that was by music. And I would play this music in my head. There were certain things that you would have to go through that would take time. Like you'd put your arms out like this and you would have to hold up a towel. And then you would have to hold up a wet towel. And then you would put the rifle across your, your hands. And, and which it was actually a lesson. You would learn that it didn't matter if you were just holding your arms up by themselves or whether you had a great weight. It was just it was just plain difficult. And it wasn't the the towel or the rifle. So 
how I was able to get through these things is I would play this music. And the music I would play would be Jesus Christ Superstar because I knew every word, every note. And if you go any period of time without hearing anything like music or TV, your reality changes. And playing that music in my head kept me in touch with the reality I came from. It kept me grounded. So the other day, I stumbled across that music. And so then I had Alexa play that album for me. And it just kind of, all these old thoughts and feelings kind of came flooding back. And I still know every note, <laughs> every word to every song on that double album. Uh, so that's my personal story for the day. No, there's no moral to that story. So I want to mention there's uh, two new platforms for videos that I'm looking into. I've signed up on both of them. One I mentioned previously, it's bit.tube, where they say you get paid for watching videos and you get paid for posting videos up. I don't know if that's true or not. I've been on there for about three weeks and uh, I put a video on that was several hours long and went about what I had to do and left that playing. And I, to this day, nothing has come up on that site. So I don't know what the deal is on that. And the interface seems to be okay, but it's just not really well done. But I'm on there, so I'm checking it out. And I'll, I'll let you know. There's a second one that I decided to try. And it's called CocoScope. C-O-C-O -O, scope. All one word. That one's pretty good. That's got a um, really good interface. It's slickly done. It looks very professional. It's uh, pretty much as good as YouTube is. And so I've got some videos, maybe 20 videos posted up on there and I'm just kind of checking that out. Now, I was asked, why would I try to find another platform? I get, you've got YouTube. Well, the deal with YouTube, if you watch very much YouTube, you see that a lot of people that post up videos complain about it. Complaints that weren't there two years ago. It's because YouTube has changed so much. They, they basically, they cheat you. You're supposed to get, receive money for the advertising. Now, I don't know if you've noticed in this past year, there's a lot more advertising going on on YouTube, but people are getting paid dramatically less. What's happened is they're finding excuses to keep all that ad revenue for themselves. Now, if you go back a couple years ago, I was receiving some money from YouTube. Now, it wasn't, you know, something was going to change my life, but I would get a couple hundred dollars a month on YouTube. At, at, you know, at some point I got to that level and that's a couple hundred dollars. Hey, you know, that's, that's pretty good. That'll pay a couple bills. Today, with many more views, many more subscribers, more of all the things that are supposed to count, I get about $20 a month. And now you get paid once you have $100 banked up. So instead of getting $200 a month, I'll get $100 every five months. That's not, again, I'm not complaining about that. This is to let you know that there is a serious problem with everybody on YouTube. Everybody is pretty much tired of it. What they're trying to do is squeeze out everyone that's not a big corporation. And they're really trying to lure in corporations to do the YouTube videos. And that was never the purpose. The purpose was for me to post up videos about my life in South America, right? They make it very difficult. And part of the way they do that, as I've mentioned in the past, is they try to make it hard to see the videos. They, they're hidden. If you don't subscribe and click the notification, very often you're not told that a video goes up of somebody that you're trying to watch, you're trying to follow. Didn't used to be like that, but that's the way it is now. They find the craziest reasons to censor videos. It's, it's just the whole situation has just become untenable. And 
so I've been looking for alternatives. It, you know, it's, I'll keep posting on YouTube, at least for the foreseeable future, but if I can find a better alternative where they're not constantly blocking your videos and hiding your videos. Now, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, you know that outside of maybe you may be me or, uh, you know, you might not agree with something, but there's nothing objectionable about my videos. I don't use bad language. I don't do any kind of risky topics. I, I don't do political things. There's really no reason yet I have videos blocked constantly. Again, it's not because they're trying to, you know, protect people. They're really just trying to find reasons to steal um, ad revenue. And so it gets very frustrating, you know, if you put your videos out and uh, people don't hear from you for a while and it's because you've got videos stuck in limbo. You know, it's not, it's not a fun thing. So I'm looking for an alternative and if I can find a good, reliable platform that doesn't do all of these things, um, then I'm going to do that and, I, and of course I'll let you know. And so I'm telling you as I go, you know, what I'm looking at. So that's the reasons I'm looking at these platforms. Those are the reasons I'm looking at these platforms and these are a couple that I'm looking at right now. So remind you that I do have that blog page. It's on grand-columbia.com. A couple of things about myself that I don't do in videos, about particular events, how I feel about them. It, it's far more personal than the videos themselves. And uh, the last thing I'll mention is the Patreon page. It's also going through some updates and changes. Uh, so you can find all the links for this uh, down below in that little comment box. So uh, take a look at that. You may want to, you know, whether you're contributing or not, the Patreon page is a good place to see videos and I'll start posting more up there. Upcoming videos. and. I've been stuck on this one about getting a visa in Colombia, and it's not stuck because it's, it's ironic. It's the simplest process in the world. But I have video clips and I'm, I'm really having a lot of trouble getting this thing edited. But I hope to have it up soon. I won't go through the technical reasons of why, but um, how to get a visa in Colombia, I've got a video coming up on that. Another video about good places for gringos to live. And I cover a number of cities from one, from the south to the north of Colombia, of places that you might be interested in living. For example, are you aware that there's a place in Colombia that is very much like Ecuador? The people are the same people as Ecuador, the culture, the history, They're, it's Ecuador. Uh, as a matter of fact, their number one food is cooey. Located in a basement, uh, it's located in a basin surrounded by mountains. The population is about the same. It's very, very, very much like being in uh, Cuenca, Ecuador. So I'll, I'll go over that city and a number of others that are possibly uh, of interest to you and places that are good for gringos to maybe relocate to. And while I haven't done this yet, <laughs> I don't know what's taking me so long, there's a little town that is just north of Manizales, a couple hours on the bus, that is where the people that founded Manizales, it's where they came from. And the story about the people founding Manizales, that might be another video, is uh, climbing up these treacherous mountains to, to found this city on top of a mountain. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite an adventure, um, quite a story. And this town is supposed to be a beautiful slice of history. Uh, so I wanna get to this little town and check it out and I'll do a video on that. There is a um, food critic in Cuenca High Life in, uh, in Ecuador, in the, in the digital magazine Cuenca High Life. And I, asked, I was asked, because I 
done some videos on various restaurants and, and food in Cuenca over the few years I was there. I was asked what I thought about the, the critic and I was asked this a while ago and I haven't responded because I don't, you know, I really don't like to get into anything, you know, negative. On the other hand, I just, you know, I'm a straight shooter and so I'm just going to say it what it is. I've been reading the food critic articles and what really stands out to me is everywhere is awesome, amazing, and perfect. And it just kind of takes me to a larger category of so many reports and videos and blogs and websites that make everything so perfect because they have a vested interest in that. And it just doesn't do anybody any good. I mean, seriously, are you going to go to every restaurant in Cuenca and it's just going to be life-changing and just this amazing place? Hell no. There's, there's far more crap restaurants in Cuenca than there are good ones. And granted, in the last year, the, the good ones have been growing quite a bit. But you also have a lot of restaurants going out of business. It's got to be, just like in the USA, it's got to be the worst kind of business to ever get into because, you know, they come and go. They go broke constantly. There are some good restaurants. But for this guy, every restaurant is changing his life. Every restaurant is a must-see. And I'm sorry, it just ain't the case. It's just not so. So, you know, it's like the writing's pretty good. No, you know, it's okay if you take it for entertainment, but I wouldn't rely on, on something like that any more than I would these these sites and blogs that are trying to sell you a seminar. I mean, they're going to tell you all this wonderful, fluffy stuff. It's just bull crap. But it's a way to, you know, put money in their pocket. So... You know, I don't hate them for that. People have to make a living, but I just, um, you know, just be straight about it. Every restaurant isn't perfect. Every restaurant isn't life-changing. So, that's what I think about that. Oh, let the hate mail begin. So that's it for coffee time on this Halloween day. Uh, soon to be Halloween night, and yes, they celebrate Halloween in Colombia. A lot of face painting going on, amazing face painting. If I, uh, I'll see if I can find a few and post them up here, but um, yeah, they they do they do uh, Halloween here. It's it's kind of cool. Um, they didn't really do Halloween in in Ecuador, but here, it's a thing. So that's it. That's all I got. I'll see you soon.